I'm not sure if Totally Rad cuts it for the traditionally spooktacular lineup of games I would typically cover in October, but it does have some creepy vibes. Starting with the cover, there's a green monster on it. Monsters are scary. And the game is based on a dude, Jake, and this righteous babe, Allison, who team up with a gnarly little magician from the underworld named Zebediah, who has some special powers. The manual for this game is several paragraphs long and wrought with 90s surfer lingo that was all the rage in the day, and I gotta admit, I totally, like, still use it pretty regularly, my dudes. It's worth noting that the manual for this game goes hard on the jokes. It tosses in pictures for no reason, like this one of this random man. The manual even says, okay dudes, this is a picture of my boss. He doesn't have anything to do with this game, you know? And on a later page, there's a picture of this woman. And below it, it says, excellent, I thought I lost this picture. I totally forgot that I stuck it in this manual. Very righteous, babe, for sure. My favorite part of the manual is here. There's a long paragraph that is impressively written to include tons of unnecessary alliteration in a story that is unnecessarily long. Little did Jake and Allison know that they had become pubescent pawns in the pestilent power politics of Edigy, the malfeasant underground menace who, through mental malpractice and mesmerism, had managed to impose the malevolent meanderings of his morally moribund mind on the majority of the inhabitants of the underground world. Whoa, somebody slap me. Say, I could use a picture break. How about you dudes? And then, it's just a picture of a plane. <laughs> so yeah, maybe not the spookiest option for this October, but a bodacious choice nonetheless. Let's hit it and see what's up, dudes. Here you play as Jake in this single-player romp to find his crush, Allison, and her dad. How'd her dad get involved? Well, it's a long story and I've already read enough of it for you, so you'll have to peruse the manual yourself. This is an action platformer and you're armed with a, uh, kinda strange gun. Press B to shoot it and A to jump. On screen you'll see your health and magic meter in the upper left, L for life, M for magic, dude. Jake has 12 magic options at his disposal, and they are granted to the player from the get-go. Honestly, it's a little overwhelming without some ramp-up or tutorial for when best to utilize these, so feel free to experiment a ton and figure out what these things do at the beginning. To access the magic menu, simply press start. Pressing select actually pauses the game in this one. Once you've pressed start, you'll see you have options for full health, partial health, stopping time, and moving faster. These four are self-explanatory. Select the one you want with A and then press start to return to play. You haven't used the spell yet though. You've only selected it. To use it, you'll press up and B together. Each spell uses a different amount of magic which you can observe from watching the meter deplete. In addition to those four basic magic abilities, there are eight more on the next page of that menu. You can attack with fire, water, wind, or stone. You can also morph into a freaking eagle to fly, or a lion to jump higher to avoid taking damage, or a fish for swimming. And lastly, you can turn yourself back into Jake using this icon that I cannot for the life of me make out, but it costs no magic. Your regular gun, which despite having so much magic at your disposal, you'll still use the majority of the time, has a charge shot. If you hold down B for an extended duration, you'll charge up a shot that's good for wiping out some tougher enemies in one go. Similarly, your jumps are also affected by how long you hold down the A button when you jump. The game is broken into five stages, each with two or three levels within. You start with three lives, but you can earn more by killing enemies. It can be worth it to kill as many enemies as you see rather than avoid them, as your first 50 kills earns you a 1-up, and then every 100 after does the same. Each level of a stage acts as sort of a checkpoint so that when you die, you'll start back at the beginning of the most recent level you got to. But a game over and continue will take you back to the beginning of the entire stage. There are no passwords here, it's all meant to be taken down in a single go, and you have a limited number of continues. I told you there would be some creepy vibes in this game, and every one of those vibes are found in the boss fights. Just look at these things, they're hideous. Great big eyeballs, unsettling faces and expressions, I think the boss designs in this game are some of the system's best. Totally Rad has great graphics and animation for the NES. Hampered by the occasional slowdown, sure, but still worth ogling at. Unfortunately, there's a ton of flicker that can lead to your character taking some hits you can't see coming, and control-wise, I found our guy Jake to be a little sticky at times. 
Like you may have still been at the tail end of a jump animation or magic transformation animation when you wanted to fire your gun so it didn't fire at all and you took damage. Stuff like that. But having so many magic abilities at your fingertips means you can kinda play through this one however you feel. Are you like me and limit your magic use to just life refill so you can go hard on the bosses? Or do you cruise through the levels making good use of all your magic abilities whenever you can to make it a little easier on yourself and then just tank the bosses? The world is your totally rad burrito. Overall, the music is pretty solid. The music that plays in the cutscenes is my favorite. And the cutscene animation quality is way better than you'd expect. In fact, the whole dang game is better than you'd expect. Dude. Fun fact, in Japan, this game is called Magic John, who honestly sounds totally rad. This game was one of a kind, ushering no sequels or spin-offs. In fact, it didn't review all that well. At the time, critics felt the game was too derivative and not unique enough. Even the comical manual, the nice sprite work, lack of punishing difficulty, all that didn't soften hearts toward it. It was nailed for being too repetitive and too easy. Personally, I found it to be a quite solid game that belongs on the upper tier of NES lists. It's not remarkable, but it is well above average and worth a shot for anyone out there looking for some 2D platforming goodness on the system that you may have overlooked. Well, that's gonna do it for Totally Rad on the NES dudes. As always, dude, 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 dude. Dude.